Peter, you were in the Sea Org for 20 years. Yes. How old were you when you joined? I was around 25. Like about 10, 15 years ago, there was actually a time when uh, uh, when the, the production was good. We would we would get to go out into a hotel and have fun and have a party. But all these things, uh, bit by bit, got cancelled. Why do you think uh, over time David Miscavige started making it worse for Sea Org? It's always been bad. I mean, Sea Org's always been worked to death. But when did you notice things start getting worse? Uh, it's definitely the basics. You know, there, there was a slogan uh, when the basics came out that was uh, like an advertisement, advertisement for a public that says uh, that uh, with the basics, uh, Scientology will never be the same. But for us, this meant something really literal. Mm, that's pretty dark. Yeah. It would never be the same. Again. And it wasn't the same. Yeah, and for us especially, but but it was in the negative sense that it yes. was never the same again. Oh yeah, it's very it's a very grim statement that yeah. you, it would never be the same. The um, the general trend of the of the two thousands were the ideal orgs, the basics, the release of Golden Age of Tech Phase Two. Having the knowledge, you know, of from the Golden Age of Knowledge and bringing it to the Golden Age of Tech Phase Two. It makes it a whole new level. It's almost supernatural. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because before it was like me and Scientology was separated, and now I feel like I have it in me, you know? It's like going through my veins. And I can almost smell Run's ink. <laughs> How do you actually leave? Well, I was actually going from uh, Tampa to Aruba via Miami. And uh, I was supposed to get on the connecting flight in, in Miami, and instead of that, I would just walk out and uh, get on a Greyhound bus. So and I, and I know that the whole airport was looking for me. Where did you, where did you take the Greyhound bus from and to? Uh, I went from Miami to Panama City. Really? Yeah. And then what did you do once you got there? Well, I checked into a motel. Yeah, but I mean, you don't have a lot of money. Where, where, where are you trying to get back to Hungary? Back home? No, no. Uh, I mean, I was, I was trying to find a place to stay, a job, and then I was waiting for my wife to come with me. So you both had planned your escape. Yeah. Now, your wife shows up eventually? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Uh, I went to the airport and I picked yeah. her up. And you were able to find work? No. No? No, it was very difficult to find work. Because of your 20 years in the Sea Org? I, I actually... See, the thing is, when somebody comes out, they need this kind of help. Yes. Like, I put in a lot of job applications, but I never got any kind of answer to them. And then, when I even went to a, sh uh, a place like, uh, like a KFC, and then they said, well, just go to the internet and uh, put in your application on this site. And then I went on that site and uh, it didn't say that that specific unit uh, was needing staff. Yeah. So they just didn't, didn't really care. And see, that's one thing you wouldn't learn in the Sea Org are, are, are skills to find a job. Some Sea Org members report the first thing they do is they, they get caught up on sleep. Did, did you get caught up on sleep? No, no, I was staying up all night in the rain. Yeah, were because of the stresses. Well, because uh, I had to leave the motel because they were coming after me. So I, I, I basically, it was raining, and I ended up uh, staying under the roof of a church. Oh, to escape from the sea. Yeah, the sea was trying to retrieve you. Yes. I mean, this is trying to kidnap you back to where you don't want to go. Yeah, exactly. Did you think about calling the police? No, I, I was trying to stay away from the police because I didn't know what would their reaction would be. Was part of it because you were in the in the country as a Hungarian national? No, it no. just uh, I didn't know if they would help me or not. Or they might give you back to the church. Or they just might give me trouble. Yeah. So I, I had no idea. So I was just trying to, you know, when a police car came, then I made sure I wasn't visible. So you have no family here in America. That's right. No one to turn to for help. Yeah. So, 
how do you get out of the situation in the hotel? Do you move on from there? Well, I, I went to the beach. I literally, I laid down on the beach. Like, it was like the regular beach. It was like all trashed and stuff like that. And I, I managed to f uh, sleep a little bit. And then on Craigslist, I found uh, some kind of a, a place like uh, somebody was uh, giving out a room. And I think it was like $70 uh, for a week. And it was... Uh, it was really far away, like like seventy miles or something, yeah. and it was very shitty. Yeah. Did you feel like you were a homeless person almost? Yeah, almost. Basically homeless. Yeah. Living on subsistence. Yeah. So how? When did you go back to Hungary? When did you decide that, to go back home? It was several months later. Yeah. Like basically, what happened is that after I got my wife out. And then we started to do a uh, an online business. We were selling on eBay, and uh, and we, we got some uh, electronics like Walmart uh, customer return electronics. And the people around us basically they they were criminals, and we got robbed. Oh. And we felt that our life was in danger, and that's why we eventually returned to Hungary.